Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another quarantine version of Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have the model slash entrepreneur slash her own boss bitch, Alex Lakes on. Huh? And um, she is recording from home. She's kind of out in the mountains. So there are people at her house, which is why you'll hear like a little bit of conversation in the background. But it just adds oh, yeah. like the ambiance of you know, uh, quarantine life as we call it. So Alex, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm actually great. People keep like asking me that question, almost like they're expecting this, like, oh, it's horrible. And everything's like really terrible. And I miss work and I'm so lonely and I'm depressed. And I'm going to tell you something. I am none of those things. I'm literally the same. I feel like. I'm literally enjoying not working so much. Um, mm -hmm. I'm enjoying like kind of focusing on marketing and other things. This podcast that I was never able to do before. Mm -hmm. So I'm having a great time. Good, 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 yeah. good. Yeah, I'm. I'm the same. I'm like I'm a super introvert. I. I mean, I am not a hard. I am really introverted. So like, this is like not honestly not much of a lifestyle change for me. Like, I'm such a like stay at home person, and like, right. You know, so like, I love it. I'm. I'm happy too. Yeah. Uh, what have you been doing during this per time period? Have you like picked up any new hobbies or been working on stuff like besides your normal mm -hmm. content creation stuff? Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely content creation. And it's forced me to like, get super creative with it. Because like, I can't film mm -hmm. with people. So I'm I'm like, literally back to my OG webcam days where I'm like, ordering costumes and like doing cosplay shit and like, you know, getting super creative with scenarios and all that. And it's been fun. But aside from that, I've just been like, you said, like, you know, working on stuff you didn't have time to before, because same, like, I've always wanted to start a blog, I'm very much into like wellness and health and like, pretty much living your best life and being your best self. So like, um, now's the time. Now's the time. So I started that I've been like, really going in on making this blog and writing articles, I do that every day, and then like working on my music. So I've been really keeping busy. And then like, also, um, figuring there are like more creative ways how to make money on OnlyFans and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm never bored. I'll just leave it at that. Can you tell me maybe some of these more creative ways that you've been shooting content or um, mm -hmm. maybe some of like the cosplay stuff? Like what, what are you doing? Like that's a little different now than what you were doing before. Well, like now it's more so like solo stuff for me, but like I, for example, like I ordered like a, I ordered like a Care Bear costume the other day. I was like, oh, this is really cute. I want to do this. So I ordered like this blue Care Bear costume. And like, usually when I film for like OnlyFans, it's like, I do obviously like role play and stuff, but like, it's still like Alex, you know what I mean? I'm still me, but like with this, I want to go like full on, like, I'm going to pretend to be this character. I ordered like a nerd, a nerd costume. So I'm like, you know what it is? It's a lot more acting on my part, which I, I just love. And anyways, you know, so I'm just like going further into that, like, uh, you know, boss to the wall, if you will. Um, but as far as like other stuff or only fans, like for example, at my birthday's coming up in a couple weeks. So I was like, Oh cool. I'll do like this package deal for OnlyFans where they tip me X amount and they get access to like a special birthday video and a special birthday photo set. And it's like before this, cause I was just filming, I was shooting all the time. So like, I wouldn't like sit down and like think of creative stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, and my fans are loving it, you know, they're, they're, th and I'm thrilled too. Like it's, it's fun for everybody. Like strategizing and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm hmm yeah, OnlyFans is a really interesting like microcosm. I have to say that I remember when it first started, um, I didn't believe that it was going to really pick up the way that it has. But there's just something about that platform that really attracts customers and has become such an incredibly profitable endeavor for so many girls. What do you think it is about that platform that is so attractive to your fans? it's it's just the human one-on-one -on -one interaction it's such a personalized experience for every single fan because I'm on there dming my fans twice a day 
if I know a certain fan loves foot videos, I'll make a foot video and be like, here you go. I made this for you. Tip me if you want to see it. So it's, it's a much more personally curated experience. So it's like a one of a kind thing that people can't get anywhere else with their favorite star, you know? So it's like, it's, it's truly a one of a kind intimate experience with your favorite star and, and just having those connections, especially now that we're like stuck inside you know, like people just want that connection. I think that's the bottom line. It's all about connection. Yeah. I, yeah. You're absolutely right. That was something that I think people have been lacking for a long time. I think just in general, but also too, especially as technology advanced and the need to interact with other people became less and less. Yes. Um, people started losing that human connection with people. And now, especially during the quarantine, where literally you cannot go out and socialize and see other people. Um, what a way to kind of expound the problem, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. How are you like at chatting with your fans and stuff like that? Because I have to admit, I get really irritated with some of mine and I get very snappy. <laughs> I, I just like don't have the patience to deal with some people. But in general, like, and how do you handle like really pushy fans? I make, they leave. I don't. I'm like, you want to be pushy, go somewhere, somewhere else. Like I used to when I first got in, you know, and like even when I first got onto OnlyFans, it was I really I've just grown into myself as a woman and like as a as an adult human and like setting boundaries and all that and if somebody pushes me I'm like I, I like this is supposed to be fun for me there's a reason why I do this it's so everybody can have fun and relax and if you're gonna push me bye just go yeah. I don't I'm not upset you know there's no shortage of humans on this planet so yeah. it's fine that's for sure Mm -hmm. Um, so let's take it back a little bit. Let's talk about how you actually got into the industry and what led you down the road to become a more independent content creator like you are now. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, so I got into the industry, the adult industry as a whole, I started webcamming. So let me like rewind here. So I went to college. I like the way I grew up, the way it was raised, I was like, you go to school, you get a good job, like, you know, the basics. And so I went to college, I got my bachelor's in TV broadcasting, and I got my MBA in digital marketing. I, um, and then I was working full time at an office. I was a, a public relations specialist. I was a PR, I was an account executive. I was in charge of clients. I fucking hated it. I fucking hated it so much. It was like, this is what, what I was what working did you for. Hate about it? I hated the mundane. It was it? so mundane. It was so mundane and the monotony of driving to the office every day and then driving back nine to five every day, like clockwork and sitting at a desk with a 30 minute lunch break. And it was the same shit every fucking day. Like I had no, I felt so stifled and so stuffed. And like, I had to dress a certain way. I had to act a certain way. You know, I was in a corp, like more or less a corporate setting. And I felt like a, like a fraud. Like I felt like I wasn't, I knew in my soul, I was like, this is not me. Like I'm a very creative, like expressive person and like a, like a gypsy soul, I guess. I love to like, I, I like to do different shit every day. You know, I like to do different things every day and have fun. And like, it was just not for me. And I was like, so taken aback that I felt, you know what it was? I was like, I was sold a lie. That's how I felt. I was like, I was sold this lie that like life would be so great after school. And like, this is a dream that everybody works for. And I got out and I got in that life and I was like, fuck this. Like I hated it. It like sucked the life out of me truly. So I was just like living for the weekends and I would just go like party like crazy to escape that life. And it was just not good. It was not healthy. So it was a blessing in disguise when I got laid off from that job after like a year and a half. And, um, I was like so devastated because like, even though I knew it wasn't right for me, it was just like what I was I'd worked for forever. So it was like what I was supposed to want and be gracious for. Um, but I'm like a very resourceful person. So after that, I was like, okay, I snapped into action. And uh, I had friends who were promotional models. So I did that for a while. I got into that. I loved it. I love going to different locations every day and promoting different brands and products and meeting new people. It was just like the newness of every day, like something new every single day, right? And then I also, um, I started, and also, by the way, when I was working at the PR firm, okay, so like I was being paid X, I don't know, like 20 bucks an hour. 
to write like press releases for these big clients. And then one day I stumbled across a bill that my boss sent for a press release that I had written for like $350 and she paid me 20 an hour. And then when I saw that bill, I was like, I put two and two together. I was like, wait, I could cut out the middleman and I could make 350 an hour instead of 20 an hour. So I had that in my head. So like after I got laid off from that job too, I started doing some freelancing. So I was making good money doing that like for PR. And then, um, I was, I was getting bored. I was getting bored. I picked up a digital marketing gig too. I was bored with that. And then I was at a party and one of my friends, like in passing was, this was like two years into that life. And one of my friends when in passing was like, Oh, I found this site. It's called my free cams. And like, it's really cool. And I was like, Oh, tell me more. And he's like, yeah, all these girls just like sit around in their underwear and they play games and chat all day. And like, they make so much money. And I was like, like, he was just telling me this to tell it to me. But in my head, this light bulb went off and I was like, Hmm. Okay. So I went home that night and I looked it up and I really did some sleuthing and I was like, Holy shit. Like this looks dope. I want to do this. So it took some thinking on my end because obviously I was well aware that like once you do shit like that on the internet, like it's a free for all. People will find you. Yeah, but, you can't take that shit back. Mm-mm. So it took a it took a little bit, like a month or so. But then finally, I was like, no, I'm gonna do this. And when I do things, I do things. Like when I decide, like that's it. So I like. I just decided I was like, I'm going to be a cam model. Like, that's what I want to do. So I stopped freelancing. I wrote like I was like more or less working full time for the social media company. But like I wasn't technically a full time employee. So I resigned from that. I was terrified because I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing a legitimate, legitimate job. Like, who am I? But I resigned from that. I started webcamming full time. And like, uh, I loved it. I killed it. And I loved it. And I was like, I love this. Like, this is incredible. So let me rewind a little, a little back a little bit more. Like when I was a teenager, I had found, um, I think it was like Playboy or something. I found some magazines as we all do at a friend's house and we were like pilfering through them. And there's something about like the women in them. I was just like, wow, they're like so gorgeous. And like, they're so beautiful and they get to live this really dope life. And they're in California. And I was in like Bumblefuck upstate New York. Like there's like a, or no, I'm sorry. I was in Westchester at the time. So it was fine. But like, I grew up at that time when I was a teenager, I was in, I was in high school and it was like, you know, t- small town USA. There was nothing going on. It was cold. I was just like, this is not for me. I, I knew I didn't want that life. So even when I was in Westchester after college, like doing the webcaming and stuff, I was still very unsettled. I had this unsettling feeling and it was because I had always wanted to move to LA because I still had in my head, like, I want to like go model. I want to like go do something more fun. I want to do like cool stuff. I want to go be in Playboy, like that kind of thing. And not only that, but when I was in high school, I also saw this documentary on women in adult film and just the way they were portrayed, like it was just so cool to me. And like, I wasn't even, I was so restricted as a child, like, and my, my, you know, I was a goody two shoes, like straight A student, like teacher's pet, like everybody, you know, so square. I mean, I did kind of corrupt all my friends because I would go out and party and stuff, but like, more or less, I was like super square, very well, well-rounded in all these activities. And like, I don't know, I just wanted to do porn. I don't know what the fuck it was, but I was like, I want to do porn. But that was always in the back of my head. Obviously, I never told people because like, what, like, I'm not going to fucking tell people I want to do porn. That's so weird. I told like an ex-boyfriend and it was like in passing. But like at that time when I was webcamming and feeling unsettled and I was like, oh my God, I'm about to be 25. And I had had a couple relatives just pass away at the same time. And like, when I was at that funeral, I was like, life is so short. Like, who knows what's going to happen at any given time? Like, nobody knows. And I was like, if I'm going to move, I better do this now. While I like, you know, I'm, I'm young, like, I don't have really responsibilities. <laughs> it took so much because like, I didn't know anybody in LA. I didn't even know where to start. So I just Googled how to be a porn star and that's when I found OC Modeling, which was my agency. And I just emailed them. Like, I had my best friend take these photos of me, and they were so terrible. It was just, like, me in, like, lingerie on the fucking carpet on my bedroom floor. And, like, I don't even know where they are right now. They were just so terrible. But they emailed me back, and they liked it. They liked what they saw. And they're like, can you come out to L.A.? Like, you know, sometime soon so we can meet you, and we'll take you to go meet these companies for go 
And I'm like, yeah. So <laughs> I bought a plane ticket and went out there like a month later. And I, uh, I went to meet the agents. And uh, the whole time I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, who am I anymore? Like, it was crazy. It just felt so surreal. But um, I did. And I went out there. I met some companies. I went to like Hustler. And I was like, and, you know, a few others. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I want to try this. I want to do this. Because, like, I was webcamming at the time. And, like, you know, girls were doing, like, girl-girl shows. And it was, like, super – I was, like, integrated in that world already. So I was more comfortable. So um, I I was like, yeah, I'll do this. So at the time I was, like, living in New York. So I'd fly out, like, once – maybe, like, once a month or so. And then finally – I think I did that once, actually. And then I finally moved into the model house for a full month. And uh, I was just filming there. And then I got a place in Hollywood. And that was that. I shipped a few boxes of stuff out and restarted my life. And here we are. Wow. Can I ask? uh, So uh, first off, can I ask what the woman with the adult film documentary you saw was that inspired you? Because most documentaries on adult are pretty skewed like towards the negative. I don't know if it was like my teenage brain that chose not to see the negative or I was just so enthralled by the lifestyles that were being shown on the TV of like all right. these, like, you know what I mean? I don't remember. I don't remember it was so long ago, but I just knew, I think like Jenna Jameson was in there. They're showing like her heyday, like, well, how she made like all this money and she was like a hustler. And like, I've always been that way. So I was like, yeah, I could definitely crush that. I could do it. Hmm. I was like, where is this thought coming from? Like, I don't know. It was just some girl from upstate New York, the country, like, I don't know. I just, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. (laughs) Were you, I mean, were you like a pretty sexual person before you started webcamming and stuff like that? Like, were you fairly comfortable with your body and sexuality or was it something that you really only came into when you started webcamming? It was something that like was always in, like, I was never like quote unquote slutty or anything. Like I was a girl that was always in relationships with like one guy but it was something I had like in me and then like, yeah. I, you know, it was just in there. So like it just had to come out. So webcamming just helped me bring that out. And then like I was dating this guy at the time and like he was also like very open minded and like he helped like together we kind of like explored that world. So like we would go to like swingers parties and like we had like threesomes and I was chill about it. Like I loved it. It was so fun for me. And I was like, OK, we're on to something here. This is fun. Like why do people make such a big deal out of this? This is not a big deal. It's just like a fun time, you know? So right. that also further confirmed like, okay, I can definitely handle, you know, being in the adult industry. So, and then I also, sorry, I was, uh, I remember very vividly. I, uh, when I was a cam model in 2012, I went to Exotica in New Jersey, just as like a cam model. And I met some adult people there, Huggy and, uh, Jesse Jones, like I just met them randomly in New Jersey when I was like just a cam girl and they were talking to me about doing porn. And I remember um, I was like, oh, I'm going to sign with this specific agency that I had found because they had a lot of top names and they were like, don't sign with him. Don't sign with him. And I'm not going to say who. I'm sure you know who. Oh, it's fine. I know who you're talking about. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, but you know what? If I hadn't run into them, I would have. Mm. So crazy. They have a very professional looking um, facade. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to pull people in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So you come out to LA and you're at the model house. What was the model house like? Because I've heard so many horror stories about <laughs> staying in model houses. So I wonder if you had kind of like that similar experience or was it different for you? Did you like, you know, like have a lot of camaraderie with, you know, other girls you met in the industry, like kind of like became friends and they helped mm-hmm. walk you through, gave you advice, that kind of thing. What was your experience like? It was so great. I, I, I loved it. I loved it. It was like, we were all so new. So it was like, we were all in it together. And I think the only girl left that I lived with is Carmen Caliente. And uh, so it was me, her, and then two other girls that were Brooke, Brooke Wilde and Taylor White. And then um, Bailey Bay. So it was all of us were living together and we were pretty crowded in there, but like 
you know, we were so new. We're like, we're porn stars. We're living in LA. You know what I mean? We're in that, we were in that, like as every single new girl gets in that like state. Yeah. And obviously that falters real quick, but like for that brief period of time, I was there, it was only like a month or so. Like it was so fun. It was like, you know, cause it's like, there were so few other humans that could possibly relate to what I was, what we were all doing at the time. Mm. So it was like having a sisterhood of sorts. We would like go to the mall we go to the beach, like we would just do stuff together and then like go to work and then come back and like talk about work. And it was just cool. Like we all loved it, but like, yeah, it definitely got messy, like literally messy. Like there's four or five girls, whatever living there, like it's going to get messy. And, um, so I was definitely ready to like have my own place, but it was a really good intro to that world. Um, you know, it was like a safe little bubble for us to like all be in. It's funny when you said sisterhood because I had Lena Paul on once and we we deemed it the sisterhood of no pants. So um, (laughs) I always think about that. (laughs) It's like the best thing I've ever heard. (laughs) Oh my god, I gotta I gotta tweet that. That's a tweetable. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It's I've had a couple people hashtag that one. So you're in LA. You are with OC modeling and you're diving into porn for the first time. Can you tell me about your first scene and what that was like for you? Yeah, so I started off slow the way I operate. I'm like, well, not so much anymore, but like back then I'm a very like tiptoe into things, go slow, get my feet wet, get used to things. So um, I was making my money doing webcamming. So it wasn't like I was filming for the money. I was doing it because I wanted to. But um So I started off doing just girl, girl, you know, cause it's like a lot softer. It's like not as intense. I was like, this is going to be a good way for me to get introduced to the industry. So my very first scene, it was like a pantyhose fetish company. And like, it was a solo and it was, I had been introduced to fetishes before. So it was like, whatever, ain't no thing. Um, my real for real company, it was hustler. That was also a solo. And I remember the crew was so shocked at how well I did because it was like my second scene ever. But since I had been camming for like two years before that, I was just like a natural, like talking to the camera. Um, I find for sure that girls who were cam girls at first are like great because yeah, like they're used to talking and that interaction and basically like entertaining uh, a camera, which is essentially what you're doing. Same thing that you're doing when you're shooting. Yeah, so. And it's like, I, it's literally like, you're just talking to yourself. I can talk to myself, like to the camera for eternity. So I did that. And then my first, that was good. I was like pretty nervous. Cause you know, in my head, I was like, I'm at hustle her. What the hell is going on? Like it's, it was crazy, you know? Cause like I just seen magazines and stuff over the years growing up. And then my big scene again, my big first scene was also for hustler. It was a um, girl, girl, like cop scene. Um, and it was, I was terrified. Like, <laughs> cause like, you know, I had done my fair share of like fun time with girls before, but in my personal life with like my boyfriend. So it wasn't like a cameras around and like. And you didn't have to like open up to camera and like lick yeah. pussy sideways. <laughs> uh, uh, <can> I can <laughs> say it. All those tricks that we have, you have to learn when you're your, reading. your tongue's like stretching. Yeah, <laughs> it's like but I find honestly that a lot of times shooting girl girl with inexperienced girls is much harder than boy girl because a lot of the positions with girl girl it's difficult to see the action. Yes, um, because the penis creates like a separation between the bodies that allows you to see what's going on. But with girls, it's really easy to just bury your face in there and all you get is the back of someone's head. So yeah, yeah. there's like a whole art to shooting girl, girl. for, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, it was with this girl, Jeannie Marie. And luckily like she knew I was brand new and she was pretty seasoned and she's like, no worries. I got you. And I was like, okay. Okay. So she like led the scene basically. And like, I followed suit. So it turned out pretty good, but I'm sure if I were watching now, I would be like appalled at like the performance, but you know, that's how I guess things always are. Um, and that was that. And then I really just did, I did girl, girl for a while. And, uh, like since day one, I always had like that business mindset. So I'm like, Oh, there's tears to this. So I can do girl, girl. Then I can get a rate for boy, girl. Then I can get a, you know, going up and up all all the different stuff. So I was like, okay. So I did girl, girl for a bit. And then I was like, I'm ready to do boy, girl. So I got a contract with Brazzers for my first three scenes for boy, girl. 
And then and what was your first boy girl like? Oh, that was, it was fun. It was with, um, it was, they were, they let me like pick the, I'm sorry, it was with my geek. So it was with Mofos with my first one. And they let me right. pick the male talent. And it was, I picked Van Wild because he was a friend, he's still a friend of mine, but like, um, he was one of the first people that like I ever met. Like we would go to the beach together, me and him and like all the girls in the model house. So I was super comfortable with him. And I was like, I definitely want someone that I'm comfortable with. So like, it was yeah, just like great. a chill day on set, like with a friend, you know? So it was a good, mm-hmm. it was a good, good call for a first scene. Yeah. I, I really liked, I think that you got into the industry in a really through a great door um, that not every girl is as privileged to have. I, I really liked how you said that you, you know, you came in and you started shooting porn, not because like you needed the money, but because you wanted to. So you are already mm-hmm. kind of financially independent through the webcamming, which mm-hmm. is such a great way to start when you get into the industry, because then you never feel pressured to say yes to a scene that you don't want to do because you have right. to pay rent or you're worried about money. Uh, I had, I interviewed Kate Kennedy and, uh, she made a great point about how like she just kind of moved out to LA because she was like, Oh, that's where all the porn is before like establishing herself, like as a performer and, 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 and getting her name out there so that she got a lot of bookings. So she was like incredibly broke when she first moved out to LA because it's expensive to live here. And I think some girls think that they're going to come out here start in porn and they're just going to be booked every single day right off the bat. And that's not everybody's story. So if you come in with some kind of nest egg or some kind of other means of making money, it just allows you so much more agency over your career when you start. And it's just, you know, I wish more girls, I know it's not possible for every girl because not every girl knows how to Right. become financially independent before they get in. Like you're right. an entrepreneur, you come from a media background. So like you understood all of those things. Some girls just come in, they're like, I'm 18 and I hate my parents. So I'm going to shoot porn. I and know. like, I'll do whatever, you know? And I, those stories <sighs> always make me go like, Oh, I wish. Same. Makes That's why. Wish that, like we had training school or something. Not that these, I know, not I feel, like any, I everybody's going to go to school or listen to anyone's advice. I, feel do what do. I know. Yeah. I totally feel that. I know it's like, I I have feelings about that. It's like, I kind of feel like the age should be a little bit higher for you to be allowed to get into porn, like maybe 21, but that's whatever. But, um, you know, I feel like your brain's a little bit more developed. And I say that with respect, you know, it's just like, really because when I was 18 I was a fucking mess I was like a hot ass mess I couldn't imagine like me in 18 in LA oh I don't know where it would be right now but it wouldn't be here like I would have been partying all the time and like it would just be crazy I'm not saying every 18 year old does that I'm just saying me personally um so I'm kind of glad I got in when I did later in life after I got all most of that out of my system but yeah I mean like there's a lot you don't I mean shit even when I moved out to LA like I didn't know a lot like I, I you, there, there's no manual for anything for poor. It's like, what's a douche? Like, I don't know. Like, what do I do with this thing? Like I have to and use like, tea tree oil. Like what, what do you mean? And why isn't there a manual? Like, I swear to God, we all say this all the time when we have these conversations and I feel like this is like opportunity going like Holly, you dumbass, write a book. And I don't know why I have it. Nobody else has, but like a porn one-on-one manual would be so great for like so many people. So, well, I do my best at that. Like even, you know, now that OnlyFans is like popping right now, I do with YouTube videos and I recorded a bunch and one of them and I do live streams every day because I see like a lot of my friends that are not even in the business. Like some of them are getting on OnlyFans. Some of them are like, I want to do adult film. I'm like, okay, like, So one of the video streams I did was like, know this before you get into adult entertainment, because I've had friends get into adult entertainment, and they're like, I'm going to do it on the DL. And it's like, that's not a thing. You can't, like, people are going to find out. So I did this stream, and I was like, just know that if you're going to do this, like, everyone you know is going to find out. Your family, your friends, your fucking grandma, like, everybody's going to know. Like, plan accordingly. It's not like a discreet thing. So that's like one, one of this, one of the components of it. It's just like a lot of stuff that you people, I feel like I know, but it's just cause I know things doesn't mean everybody else knows things. So I like to share that and try to help people best they can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you actually, now that you're like a seasoned performer, 
um, and an independent woman, what advice, what do you think the greatest piece of advice that you would give to a new girl would be? Don't count on companies to put money in your pocket. Like, Mm-hmm. As in other words, don't like what you were saying before, do not get into the business being like, oh, I'm just going to make all this money shooting for companies. Like, no, you're going to make your most money owning the most content. So for me, like I always, <laughs> maybe it's not so good, but I always probably, I would turn down scenes for my agent so I could go shoot my own scenes. So I own like 450 scenes right now. So like I just keep I can chop them up. I can resell them. I can make compilation videos. Like they will last forever, you know? And it's like own as much of your own content as possible. There's no residuals with the scenes you get. And it's Mm -hmm. like, it's good. It's good to go shoot for companies. Like, but it gives you freedom to be picky. So you're not feeling like pressured to go film something you might not necessarily want to film because you need the money. Like the industry is what you make of it. So, why wouldn't you make it fun? And, and, you know, it's, it's, you're using your body. Like just, I just, I just feel like you should own. And also like, if you own your scenes, if you own as much as you can, like that's stuff that you can make money off of forever. It's a long term versus sh- being short sighted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I grew up the daughter of, pornographers. My parents made porn Mm -hmm. and they always taught me to never depend on any one person, any one client, always create and own your own content. I mean, back in the day, you know, my, when my mom was shooting, it was really just magazine stuff that she did. Um, she did a couple of terrible pornos back in the seventies, but for the most part, she just did photography and she, unlike so many of her other competitors, um, insisted on owning the content so that she could resell it to other magazines. Cause you'd have other like smaller foreign magazines that buy second rights, third rights, that kind of thing. So back then that's where she made the money. This is obviously well before the internet came along, but she was one of the few people that did that. You know, so many other people were just comfortable with the idea of just shooting for a client because you have to be a hustler if you're going to own your own content and sell your own content, yes, you right? Do. So you yes, it's you more do. work, but it's, it's more reward at the end. And so when the internet came along, my mom had like the largest personal library of erotic content than anybody else. And so she launched her website like back in 98 and she made so much money. Oh, that's incredible. And she was so lucky because she owned everything and all of her other contemporaries, like Arnie Freytag, who was um, a photographer at Playboy because my mom used to work for Playboy. Mm -hmm. He shot for Playboy for many, many years and he you know, did a ton of Playmate centerfolds and he was a great photographer, but, you know, working for Playboy, he never owned anything that he shot. And then eventually they booted him, you know, when it like kind of took over and you and Hefner wasn't really in charge anymore. And then he had nothing. And I see that now too, with the quarantine, all these other producers and photographers who have only ever relied on shooting for one particular client for all these years are suddenly totally fucked because they're out of work. I know. know. Um, And it makes me so grateful that, you know, I launched my own website, that I like started other revenue streams, that I started this podcast, like Mm -hmm. all these other things are keeping me afloat right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important, but you're right. You have to be a hustler. Mm -hmm. You have to be. But you should be a hustler if you're going to get into this business. You, you, I think it's, I think it's crucial. Like, yeah, if you're going to, if you're going to expose yourself to the stigma that the adult industry is inevitably going to rain down on you, mm -hmm. then you better be prepared to be able to not only weather that storm, but like retain some independence and, um, financial independence, um, is so important because you just, as with any business, you never know, like, one minute you're the favorite and then the next minute some new like producer comes in or something like that. And they, they don't like you anymore. It's happened Mm -hmm. to me so many times with clients, like up and down, up and down. I've been let go from companies and then brought back in. It's just like, you never know. Yeah. You got to have your own back at all times. And I'm fortunate that I've like always had that mentality. And also I hate being told what to do. And I, especially when it comes with my body, I'm like, no, like, I can't like, so it's, it's so nice to have that cushion and to know that I have my own back. And like, if something happens where I can't go film a scene, I'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. 
If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q and A's where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. Okay, so we're back. So Alex, I wanted to ask you, because you did mention when you were talking about girls getting into the industry and not really thinking it through about how everybody would find out, your family would find out. So I assume your family knows. Um, I assume, especially mm-hmm. since you're, it sounds like you're there with them right now. Uh, so how I'm did like that friends. go for, how did that go for you? Because I know that um, that's a big concern for a lot of girls. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, so I obviously like, it like when I got in I knew I was like hey my family's gonna find out like I'll tell them eventually which like I I ended up like telling everyone separately but so like my dad was like he was just like you know like I'd rather you were doing something else but as long as you're happy and you're healthy and you're making money good for you like you do you like go get it and I was like okay that's a really healthy view to take I was, yeah, it was nice. And, uh, Were you surprised? My, not really, because, you know, I think I, I definitely get my real, I'm like pretty chill. I think definitely get that from my dad. Like, he's just like, mm-hmm. you know, like with the flow and nothing's like that big of a deal. My mom, on the other hand, did not speak to me for four years. So that was rough. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was rough. Um, but we never really had like a really a good relationship anyway. So it's like I really was pretty like in de- I've always been like pretty independent as it is. So it's not like it like it wasn't like we were close and then we just stopped talking. It wasn't like that. So it was kind of just like a thing where if I ever wanted to call her, I was like, oh, I can't do that because she's not speaking to me. And it was like for four years, we just didn't speak. So I was like just really on my own for, I mean, obviously like I had friends, but like, yeah, I was just, you know, not really, I wasn't like that tight with my dad either, but it was good to know like he, he like supported me. But um, yeah, it was like a weird time because I felt like I didn't really have, I mean, people, so my friends had my back and everything, but I didn't have that family having my back, which was fine. Like, again, I've always been very independent. My brother was very supportive too. Like he's five years younger than me and we're besties. And he was like, okay, thanks for telling me. Like, I don't care what you do. He had a very similar reaction as my dad. He's like, you know, if that's what you want to do, like good for you that you're doing what you want to do. That's great. That's, Mm -hmm. that's great. It's good that you had at least some people in your family supporting you. I find that when I talk to people about that, it's generally like, if there is any pushback against it, it's usually either the father or the mother that gets very upset. And then, you know, one, one or the other kind of accepts it more. Yes. So, um, it's kind of interesting how that works, but is your, how's your relationship with your mom now? I'm assuming you guys are speaking now. Yeah. Yeah. We're good now. We're good. And you know what it was? So my dad passed away in 2017. So really after that, it was like, okay, well, you know, life is short we need to make amends. Like we're both very, very stubborn people. So it took a lot for her to, for like, 
she never really said anything, but we just kind of like hugged and like didn't speak of it. We don't really speak about it now. Like now sometimes like she'll call and be like, oh, I'm going to work. And she's like, okay, I'll talk to you later. So it's like, we just know. We just, it's mm-hmm. fine. It's good. It's good now. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. It's unfortunately sometimes something like death kind of ha- is what forces you to realize what's important in life and mm-hmm. connection with the people that are still living. Exactly. It's interesting too, because you said that like, I think when you like went to your grandparents' funeral was when you realized that you hated the job that you were in and you needed to go and like do what you wanted to do. So yeah, it's yeah, an eye opener for sure. It really yeah. like, and when my dad passed away, like it really, again, like it just kind of solidified. It's like, wow, like, first of all, I need to clean up my own life because I'm doing some shit that is not congruent with who I am. Mm-hmm. And like, that was an eye opener. And then like, it just, it further solidified for me, like what's truly important in life, which is relationships and family and loved ones and staying healthy and taking care of yourself and all that stuff. So I'm like a very silver lining person and glass half full person. So, you know, I, I, I see it. That's how I see it. And, and, you know, and now I also see it. Okay. Well, he was proud of me. Let me continue to live my life in a way that will, um, help continue to make him proud. Yeah. Honor the fact that you're an independent woman. I think that mm-hmm. that's, you know, and self-sufficient, you know, yeah. there's so many people out there with, you know, my, my parents have always been so grateful that my siblings and I are all self-sufficient, you know, because I know that mm-hmm. there's definitely parents out there that have kids that they just can't like get off the couch. Right. You know? I know. So I know. Yeah. So it really kind of doesn't surprise me that you've become this kind of personal, um, you know, boss bitch, entrepreneur, <laughs> um, clip. I love when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, I'm trying to think of like more adjectives, but I my my vocabulary is limited. Okay. I because I remember when I met you was when at DP Star, when I was a judge for DP Star. Yeah. And you came through and you gave us all stickers of yourself. Oh, I did. Yeah, the other brands. <laughs> yes. I forgot I remember about that. that. Yeah. I did not because that made an impression on me. And you said that you were really into marketing. I think you talked about your marketing background. Mm. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, this is a girl that understands that porn is a career and that it's something that you can truly have longevity in and really like build a business around, you know, it's not Mm -hmm. something that you come in and you do for a summer. Cause like you want to get back at your boyfriend (laughs) or like, you know, like you want to make enough money so that you can like go to Greece or you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. I know. (laughs) Yeah. Like there's, and, and because of the stigma around it, like you better come in there with ideas of longevity and making it like a serious career or it's like either if you do one scene, you may as well do a thousand scenes. Like it's not, uh, it. it's not a pool of water. You want to just dip your toe into, to like, see what you, how you feel, especially now with the internet, maybe back in the day, you know, your, your scenes could be buried in on some random VHS compilation that would eventually go out of production. Right. But that's not the case anymore. So. Fuck no. It's funny you say that too. Like, cause, uh, you know, you can do one or a thousand scenes. Cause I have, you know, I, got some friends that like got in and they I was I'm very straight up I'm like listen like this is what's gonna happen everyone will find out like you will forever be labeled a porn star if you do one scene or you do a bunch so you might as well just like just go you know just go do what you want to do but like at the end of the day like the red the what's it called the scarlet letter is always going to be with you so you might as well own the fuck out of it and just maximize it and get your fucking money and make something of your of your career you know yeah what do you feel like has been the most rewarding thing about working in adults well i i don't think i would have ever truly found myself if i didn't get into adult like i if I didn't do this, I would still be like a shell of a human, like working at an office job, like wondering why I wasn't fulfilled and happy. Like I was supposed to be like, it really forced me. Like, first of all, when you work for yourself, it's like the biggest game of self-discovery and like the better you know yourself, the better you will do. So it's like this huge, like personal development expedition that you go on. 
And like, yeah, I never would have truly known who I was as a person. And even then it took a long, many years to even get there. And also it's like when you're naked on camera and you're doing this, like, so you're such an intimate act for millions around the world to see. It's so taboo. I mean, I think we're getting better in that sense as a society, but like, it's like pretty taboo. So there's still stigma. (laughs) It's like, you really don't give a fuck much about anything. Like if people like what people have to think about you or like say about you, like it doesn't matter. It's like, you've already done this crazy thing that everyone's like, Oh my God, you're doing this. And it's like, Oh, it's really not that big of a deal. Like, you know, it's just my life now. So it it makes you like, for me, like I've done this, I can do anything, like anything, you know, I feel like when you get into porn, especially like we were saying, like nobody teaches you anything. And it's like every, I don't want to be like, you know, it's not like every man for himself, but a woman for herself, but it kind of is because it's like, figure it out. It's like, you're thrown to the wolves. And like, so now that I've conquered this, it's like, I can for sure do anything. I'm super confident in that. So I'm yeah, super I feel for that. It, it definitely gives you a thick skin. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think is like the one, what one thing is it made you realize about yourself? Um, that I'm capable of far more than than I could have ever, ever, ever imagined. I mean, like, and also that like, my intuition is always on point. My gut is always right. If my gut is telling me I want to do something, it's because I want to do something like my gut was telling me I had to move out to LA. And I had this little voice in my head and it never went away until I did it and got into porn. And then it vanished. And I was like, holy fuck, it's because like, I always knew where I was supposed to end up. Does that, mm-hmm. like, if that makes sense, like, yeah. it just, it taught me how to trust myself and also navigating LA, like, as a 20 something year old female, like, in the adult industry, like, again, it's like you're thrown to the wolves. So it's like, I can, you know, I can do anything. Right, right. Yeah, that is absolutely true. So obviously, working an adult has given you independence. Um, being a content creator has given you independence. And not having to work a nine to five soul crushing job has given you some freedom. Mm -hmm. So I imagine there are some other talents that you have been able to explore and expand upon. And I believe music is one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So I, yeah, I make uh, electronic music. It's me and my brother. We have a duo. It's called Fancy Monster. Um, Yeah. We've been doing that. It's crazy. Like (laughs) it's one of those things, one of those industries where it's like, I, so I had been going to like raves and festivals for since like 2010. I just have, I, I'm such, I'm so into the culture. Like that's my thing. Like it's, it's, you know what it is. It's so, it's so congruent to adult because it's a place where people of all walks of life can go and fully freely express themselves and be themselves in an accepting non-judgmental community and that's what I love about it so much. And that's why it's so important to me. That's why it's always going to be a part of my life. So I was going to these shows and like, for me, I'm the type of person where I'm like, you know, when I want to do something, I fucking do it. So I was at a show with my brother, like in 2012 and we were watching the DJ and he been, he's been producing music since like 2010. So I was like, wait, I was like, wait, wait, we, we, we can do this. Like we should do that. And he's like, wait, we should. I was like, yeah, we, we should. So we started this group. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. It's seven years later. I'm still going. We're only self-releasing. It goes back to like, I want to own all my own stuff. It took so much navigating, so much networking, so much research, but it's like we finally cracked the code as far as like how to get plays and like how to infuse ourselves in this industry and really how to get into it and all the branding and stuff like that. It has been one hell of a journey, but we're finally just starting. We just played our, we played our first festival a couple of years ago, but like now there's more interest in us now. It's, it's like now the ball is just starting to roll, but it's so funny. Cause I look back and I'm like, if I would have thought it would have taken seven years, I don't know if I would have done this. <laughs> it's a long time and it's like I have so much respect for artists now because nobody tells you it's one of those things again like porn it's like it's like thrown to the walls figure it out nobody's going to tell you anything even more so in music I find like it's more of like a boy there's a lot of men in there and like yeah there's women but it's like people are not keen on on sharing their like secrets so I'm like I'm one of those people that like it's almost like, well, fuck you. Then I'm going to figure it out. Like just watch. Mm -hmm. So I just stuck my, I just like put my blinders up and like, 
you know, I haven't stopped working and it's finally paying off. So yeah, it's fun. I'm excited. That's interesting what you say about the music industry and people not wanting to share their secrets because Mm -hmm. I find that often it's kind of the opposite in the adult industry. And I think it's because we're such the black sheep of the adult, uh, sorry, of the entertainment industry in general, that there's like a real sense of like camaraderie um, within the adult industry because it's almost like an us against the world type of mentality. Yes, yes. So we, we like to band together and try to help each other. And obviously like there's people who attack each other and there's infighting and all that kind of shit. I mean, that's inevitable. That's never going to go away, especially when, if like a large portion of your performers are like between the ages of 18 and 20 living out basically (laughs) like their, their college years and their immature, um, you know, working out those immaturity kinks that, you know, most of us don't like finally become like a real, not to say real person, but, um, like an adult, logical human, an adult. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know why I, that was such a hard word for me to find an adult, until we're older. And so it's like, you see these girls, that's what worries me about the young girls being in the industry. And I'm, I I can't subscribe to the, uh, don't get into 18 or don't get in until you're later crowd because there's arguments for both sides. And, 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 and I, I respect both those arguments. Um, and not being a performer myself, sometimes I don't really like to like have a flat out opinion about what performers should do when I'm not one of them. Sure. You know, and there are Um, very many, there are mature 18 year olds, you know what I mean? It's just like a very blanketed statement to me, but also it's like, yeah, I mean, I mean like when you get into adult, it's like, if you know the people to ask, they'll tell you, but it's like when you get in as a new girl, I'm like, (gasps) I'm so scared. Like, I don't know anybody. Like I'm all like nervous and intimidated, but like, yes, people for sure are so like, I'm, and for me too, I'm like always happy to like help people. Like I want everyone to do well. And like, you know, like, like you said, it's a, it's a small community. And I don't think a lot of people realize that it is a very small community. And I feel like every people do have each other's backs, especially when it comes to like, mainstream and like the way we're portrayed in mainstream sometimes and like the way that the adult industry like rebuttals to that you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. I know like Maitland Ward is a good example she's doing such a good job like all the articles coming out and like in touch and stuff in those mainstream publications that she's being like sex positive and it's like yes like yes because that's how it is it's not like all like people that I've talked to they're like oh so people are like doing blow on set and like people are having orgies on set I'm like Oh, what do you mean? Like, it's not like that. But I feel like that's how the public like sees us like these crazy people. And it's like real. I'm like so square. Like, it's not like that at all. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're right. And well, I mean, the world generally sees us as like sexual deviants, <laughs> you know, incredibly frustrating because they think, you know, one can't hold down a real job or, you know, be a responsible member of society or like even be around children in our personal <laughs> lives. Like people just have these crazy ideas, you know? Yeah. And, um, it's funny, actually, I did a podcast earlier this week. That's not adult related and sort of jokingly the host asked me, he's like, so like at the end of each set, each shoot, you guys like all get together and all like fuck each other. Right. Like the cameramen and the caterers and like the models. Like the and all caterers, though? That's, I know that's what I said. I said, the funniest part about that assumption is that you think that we have catering. <laughs> Okay, but that aside, that's also pretty ridiculous. Like, yes, everyone just gets in this pool and goes. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, definitely. You know, after we've shot like a 10 hour day, everyone's exhausted. We, uh, we want to go home. Like the performers are sweaty and disgusting. And, you know, the girl's been doing reverse cowgirl for like 30 fucking minutes. <laughs> Try doing squats on like a soft surface for 30 minutes. Literally. And, that's- and that's what reverse cowgirl is in porn. Yes. Oh my God. People don't realize that I heard, you know, it's funny when I was telling you about the exotica incident, not incident mm-hmm. experience. Um, I went, I saw this guy speak. I forget who he was, but he was saying that like, um, God, what was he saying? Wow, what was I fucking talking about? I just like totally lost my train of thought here. Um, oh, sexual Olympians. He's like, porn stars are sexual yes. Olympians. 
And oh it didn't God. really hit me until after I started do, like doing boy girl. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, cause it's a performance. And it's like, like you said, squats for 30 minutes, you better be in good shape and be able to like, you know, last that long. It's a workout. <laughs> it's exhausting. I get tired watching it. Like, I don't yeah. understand how you guys do that. I'm just like, this is terrible. This, I, this is, te- this looks terrible. This looks like terrible, like the worst exercise regime ever. And I'm so glad that I'm behind the camera because I don't want to do reverse cowgirl for any minutes whatsoever. And not only that, but like, it feels really good for that entire time. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) no, I love it though. I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it, obviously. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't want to suggest that people don't love performing, but um, I don't want people to think that, you know, I want, I guess I, what I want is people to understand that it is hard work. Right. And I am sure that you have days as everybody else has days where they're just like, I just want this day to be over. Oh <laughs> like, yeah. Tired, Especially like, I would like to go home. Yeah. Like we are in a shoot house where it's like 40 degrees and there's no space heater and you have to be naked for like five hours. Yes. Stuff like that. Like for sure. <laughs> yeah. I always yeah. bring or the opposite. Or the opposite. It's 115 degrees and you have to go shoot outside in direct sun, reverse oh cowgirl for 30 God. minutes. You know what I mean? Like, yes, it's just, I, it, I know the weather, the weather is a lot to do with, comfortable or uncomfortable experiences for sure for sure yeah it's a it's always an adventure yeah well alex thank you so much for coming on this was really fun um do you want to tell everybody where they can find you on social media any websites you want to tell about you mentioned you had a youtube channel like wherever people can find more about you So about me, first of all, I do want to say I have just started using this new website for performers. It's called Monetize. It's so great. All you do is you upload one scene and it's built for by performers for performers. You can sign into like your OnlyFans, Pornhub, Fan Central, all of the above clips for sale, upload the video with one click and it goes to all those websites at once. So that's like saves you a lot of effing time. So, you know, if you want to sign up for that, that's been a godsend in my life. But aside from that, I am on um, my OnlyFans. It's alexlinks.world. That is my fan club. I am on there all the time. That's that's like my life. I love it so much. Um, Obviously, Pornhub, you know, people can type in my name on there. Um, I am on Twitter. It's at the Alex Links. Instagram is at the Alex Links as well. Facebook.com slash Alex Links. YouTube.com slash Alex Links. You were also smart to go out and get all of those URLs before some asshole could steal them and pretend to be you. Oh, yeah. I uh, I have someone on alexlinks.com that was like, I want $3,000. I was like, you can suck my fucking dick. Like, I'm just going to go make all these other websites. Bye. Have fun with that. (laughs) <laughs> that's another piece of advice I give to brand new girls before their first scene comes out. I'm like, go buy your URL, yes. go get your social media handles, like do it right now because somebody else will take it from you. Yeah. Like a sketchy ass agent or maybe even not, maybe just like a random person, but yes, that's random very good dude. advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I made the mistake of uh, co- coining what I thought was a fantastic phrase uh, when I had Carla Cush on, uh, the lifestyle squirter. And I was like, Oh my God, I got to buy that URL. And sure enough, I, uh, released the episode and didn't buy that URL. And then when I released it, I remembered, I'm like, Oh, I got to go get it. And fucking someone took it. Oh, uh, so listen to my sh- podcast and took it. And I was some like, guy in mom's that's, basement that's, is just like, yes, the life. That's my bad. Uh, that's my bad. It's okay. Live and learn. Oh my God. Um, anyhow, again, thank you so much. Um, stay safe. Enjoy, enjoy quarantine, I suppose, as much as one can. (laughs) Yeah, you too. It was a pleasure. It was really good talking to you, Holly. Thank you. And you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Also, don't forget to support my show at patreon.com slash Holly Randall and filtered. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week.